Okay guys, welcome back to part 5 of the Moving Watcher Uphill series. Today we're going to be trying to hook up our larger 20 watt pump here, 12 volts, DC submersible pump, to a 25 watt solar panel. Alright, the goal is to get the water that was collected off the roof into this collecting IBC tote near the front of the yard, all the way to the back of the yard, around the corner and up the back fence to the farthest uphill part of the yard into another IBC tote. And we're only going to be using a tiny 25 watt solar panel and a very small DC rated pump here at 20 watts. So sit back, enjoy, and let's see if we can make this happen. I just want to let you guys know that this is a fifth in a series of videos about moving water uphill. So if this video interests you, you might want to go back and watch the other four. Here we are with our red pump back. We want to see if we can power it instead of with a DC 12 volt power brick, if we can power it with the solar panel. Now I just tried a 10 watt panel and it failed. I mean, I heard maybe a little squeak, but now I've got my 25 watt panel out and it says here that the maximum hour power output is going to be 22 volts. Now the amps are a little low at 1.13 and it says this pump needs two amps to run. So it's got more voltage. It's supposed to be 12 volts. It's up there at 22 volts in the direct sun. So it has too much, supplying too much voltage, but it's uh, supplying too little current. Let's see what happens. It's just a test. Here we are in the fish tank. I've got it in the sun and we have bubbles. It's working. So, direct solar, no plug converter. That's a pretty good. That, that's pretty good. So I'm going to test that out on the system to see if I can do it, do, transfer water with just the setup with one IVC tote to the next. But before I do that, let's do a, a voltage check. So we're at uh, about 12 volts only. Now the sun is not directly lined up with the panel, but I thought we would be way up there at uh, 22 volts. I mean, if it's only 12 volts, that's perfect, right? We're less likely to burn out our pump. However, when it gets cloudy, we're gonna be in trouble, of course, because it'll probably be lower than 12 volts. Yeah, now I have it more lined up. I'm just gonna keep playing around with this. See if I can get a little higher. Let me, let me play with the panel a little more. We got here the pump speeding up a little bit, guys. But look, we're not even getting up to 14 volts. Now, granted, it is past noon. We're probably around 2 30, 3 o'clock. So it's possible that it can hit 22, but we're not getting close to 22 with this panel. Now, maybe that's partly because of my cherry rigged wiring set up here. Maybe there's some loss in the wires. They don't seem hot in any way. But uh, we're always worried that this pump would just burn out if we were up to 22 because it's a 12 volt rated pump, but this is really kind of odd that's getting such a, a low voltage read during such a peak part of the day. Let me see what time it is. Hold on. Yeah, it's 3.35. I'm not able to even get it up to 14. I can give it 14. I just don't want to get it up to 22. That's very reassuring because this pump doesn't like to go too much higher than 12. So let's see how many amps are flowing through it. Not even one amp. You see that? Wow, that's uh, quite a lot of power. I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up to the IBC setup we had from part four of our moving water series, the last video we did with this right pump here. Let's see how that works. All right, let's describe the setup here. What we're looking at is two components. We've got a solar panel that's 25 watts, and we've got a pump that's rated at 20 watts. Usually these panels don't put out 100% of what they're rated, let's say 80%. So we're somewhere in this 20 watt range in terms of power. The voltage though is a problem. It's it's supposed to be putting out maybe up to 22 volts in full 100% direct sun. Uh, they suggest on the Amazon website 18, that's how they advertise it, but still that's above our 12 volt target. So I had purchased some little electronics that I was going to try, buck converters, but I don't know if I need it because as you saw, when I hooked it up to the multimeter, we were only getting 12 volts out of this panel feeding our pump here. So. If I go up to 14, I think it could still handle it. I really didn't want to hang out at the 18 to 22 range, but maybe it's a moot point, as you see in the video there. This panel is also supposed to put out up to 1.13 amps. I saw somewhere mentioned that the starting uh, power was around 2 amps for this pump, but as you see, it started up just fine in the sun with the panel connected. Uh, if I took the 20 watts divided by the 12 volts, it would kind of be running around uh, 1.6 amps. And you were seeing I was only getting 0.7 in the video there. So I think we're underpowering the pump quite a bit, down here around 12 volts from this panel and about 0.7 amps. 
guess if I were to take the 12 volts that I got off the multimeter and the 0.7 amps I got off the multimeter, I'd only be giving the pump about eight and a half watts. And this pump is rated at 20 watts, so I'm running it at less than half power, at least at 3.30 on a fairly sunny day with no clouds in the sky. It, it doesn't mean that it can't get up to that level in direct sun at noon, but um, I have a feeling I'm not going to be overtaxing that pump too much, at least on most sunny summer days. I was able to pick this pump up dirt cheap. I think it was Amazon Prime Day. However, the seller now has it unavailable. Unfortunately, when I went back on today, I see that these pumps have gone up. Now, is that tariffs or inflation or what? Anyway. Okay, so this is to the pump here, this wire here that I got in my left hand, and I'm going to connect it to the solar panel here. Okay, that probably was unnecessary, but I went ahead and tinned them just to give them a little extra solder. So if you haven't seen me use these before, these are awesome. These are actually uh, marine grade, I believe. They have a little bit of glue. See that red spot there on the outside of each channel? And the solder's in the middle, and all you got to do is run a heat gun over this. Okay, so you see how easy that is. You just kind of put the wires together and hit that middle spot with your heat gun, and the solder will melt the two wires together, let it cool. But before you do that, you just go all the way across with your heat gun and tighten up that shrink wrap. I love these things. You might want to check them out just so you have some in your shed or shop ready to go. Okay, I think I got it. Maybe we better test that before we put it in the big IBC tote. Oh yeah. You can see that it's kind of funny. You need a fairly good startup current to get that baby going. But once you get into the sun, you can kind of move it back into the shade again. But it won't start in the shade. Isn't that interesting? If I were a smart man, I would have put a piece of shrink wrap on the outside and just hit it with some more shrink wrap. But these uh, connectors have shrink wrap built into them, so I'm just going to hit, hit it with some electrical tape. And just remember, electrical tape gets its strength when you stretch it. Otherwise, it's just going to get wet and come apart, so really stretch it. Just a tiny bit of debris in there from last time. I'm just going to just kind of scrape that off with my fingernails and then put this back on. See, there's a lid. It goes in there. And at some point, if I'm noticing it's getting dirty, I'll go ahead and um, put a, a nylon footy or something over it just to kind of give it a second layer of protection from the dirt in the IBC but you know this is off the roof and the rainwater looks pretty darn clear in there so um, you can see from the outside here of the tank I've got this tarp that I kind of keep it covered up with regularly just to keep the algae from growing in there but yeah, as the sun kind of hits it you see the clearness of the water in the IBC tote so it's pretty good right now but let's get it in there and see what happens okay same uh, connection as before it comes this little pump comes with something that hooks into tubing or your hose tubing and then of course I've got this tubing coming. It'll, the pump will go down in there and then this tubing will go around, around the tote and all the way, all the way up the, the, to the back of the yard there, way, way up there to that back fence and then to the right of that back fence all the way up the rest of the hill. So let's get it going. Okay, I have it down in there. Way down there, I don't have my ladder so I'm just gonna kind of hold it here so you can kind of get an idea what's going on. And I'm going to take my solar panel and put it in the sun and we'll see what kind of power we can get out of this. It's getting late in the day, so we're probably around four o'clock now. It's pumping, but don't expect to work unless it's in full sun. I kind of got this board trying to get over the shadows. But let's see if we're getting any flow up top. It doesn't feel real strong, the vibration. But let's see what happens. Maybe we're lucky. So coming on all the way down. Can you see that IBC tote way back there? We're coming all the way along the fence. We calculated this was a little over 150 feet if we were correct last time. And we go outside the gate and the tube continues around the fence here, all the way up here, back here. Oh, okay guys, we are getting a little bit here. Not too bad. Let me go get my milk jug and we'll see how many, how long it takes to, to do a, a gallon. Alright, I'll start my clock now and we'll see how far it goes. Okay guys, we just got to the top. It's about six minutes. I'll have to see tomorrow if it can be any faster. I mean, six minutes per gallon. So, I mean, if, if you can live with that, I'm, I guess I should be happy it works, right? But I was kind of uh, looking for the one, <laughs> the power brick uh, rate of which was close to a gallon a minute. Um, here, but it's not really fair. We are in the late part of the day. The sun's come, going down now. That's the thing about solar is you know that it's it's a variable. If it's cloudy, if it's late in the day, you're going to have probably half of the flow rate that you're going to get during the mid part of the day. And you also have to make sure your panel on the other side is lined up south at 30 to 60 degrees so that you get the maximum. I think in the summer the sun's higher up, so 
probably really tilt that uh, maybe at 30 degrees. So it's facing up a little stronger. Good. I'm happy, but I kind of wish I would have got just a little bigger panel. So I would suggest, I'm not going to get another one at this point this summer because the summer is getting close to over. It's mid-August here. Um, but if you're going to do this, you might want to go up to a, a little bigger panel. I thought that EcoWorthy would be pumping it out. You know, the specs, 20, 22 volts and, you know, 1. Uh, what was it, 1.6 amps, something like that. Yeah, right. That's not what we got in our little fish tank test a little earlier. So, um, granted, we're not in the full sun and that's the maximum power output that you can expect. But I would have liked to drive that pump just a little bit harder and that panel might not be able to do it. I'm going to check it tomorrow around noon to two o'clock in the afternoon and see if the flow rate is much greater than six or seven minutes per gallon. This system here is more variable with the solar panel and you just got to expect that. That's how solar panels work. But you don't have to have a battery, right? You don't have to have a charge controller and a battery and a box to keep everything dry. It's just direct solar. And if the pump, pump it can handle this lower power, it probably will last a lot, a lot longer in terms of, you know, a big, big solar panel that's going to get up to 18 to 22 volts, you know, regularly and quite a higher current load than this. So maybe it's good to kind of underpower it and maybe it'll preserve your pump's life a little longer. Anyway, I'll get back to you tomorrow once I get into full sun and we'll see how, how much we can really get out of that baby. Okay, guys, we're at 1140 and uh, you can see here, it's pouring out pretty good. I don't know. I think overall, that's not bad been feeding this thing for the last couple hours and it's it's almost full now it was up around two-thirds i think by the end of the day it'll be all the way full it's a nice clear sunny day with minimal clouds so uh i'm optimistic this will be full hey think about it this way it maybe isn't as fast as electricity off a 12 volt brick but let's be optimistic here because i don't have to grab an extension cord i don't have to find a outside outlet to plug into this is just a single solar panel, 25 watts from EcoWorthy, hooked into a 20 watt pump, 12 volts, and it's moving water at least 15 feet uphill and at least 150 feet long. So what do you expect, right? Once you buy the equipment, it's free energy. So what can you ask for? Just a little patience. It might take a little bit longer, but this is great. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I've been up to and um, hope you can try this yourself. And please report back in the comments how it works for you. And again, thank you for subscribing and have a great day. Bye.